Hello there, everybody. This is Alex from Hardcoin Guides, being my guide for God of War 3 on Chaos Difficulty. Today we are doing part 15 entitled The Three Judges. And yes, I know we've already been to the Judges of the Underworld before, and this one's called differently because that's just the way GameSpot called it, and I'm going off their, their naming scheme, so that's why. Sorry. This is not a, you know, I didn't... I mean, I'm picking the names still, but... It's easier to kind of just use, uh, like, IGN or GameSpot for, you know, level names. Especially for God of War, because there's, you know, technically there's a ton, but, yeah. Anyway, just falling down this time. Um, this stuff is relatively straightforward and easy. I don't think I really need to explain how to properly do this stuff too much. Pick whatever direction you feel like going. If you feel like going mine to make, you know, just just to see where I go and, and to see what, you know, how I maneuver around things, that's fine, of course, too. But I, I'm just saying, like, I don't really have anything to potentially say here. Uh, but do remember that your left and your right dodges actually are left and right, and your up and down is inverted. So, yeah, don't forget that. And then I think this section is relatively almost over uh kind of quick to be honest and i think then eventually we have to fly back up right at the end of this yes after we do the yeah we do the chains yep god damn it fuck all right but here comes the hard part so let's get into guide professional mode oh boy all right the cerberus mini boss fight Phase 1, relatively simple and straightforward. Punch him with a Cestus a bunch of times. Try to stay, stay to the side or behind him. Uh, unless you feel confident enough and stay in front of him. You can, I think, technically parry the dogs back. It's really weird. You can only parry at least a few attacks. Um, I think you can parry the slam, but it's extremely hard to do if you can even do it. Also, if the dogs are surrounding you and you're just getting kind of worried um, that they might blow up soon, just use L1 square of the Cestus and knock them the hell back. Once they start doing that howling thing, or they start looking up like that, that means they're going to explode. You have, like, a split second to dodge before they do, so that way you can get the iframes from it, especially with the Cestus like I'm using. Now, if the Cerberus is running around like that, they typically are going to go for that head bash attack, and, of course, that could be parried. You know, this is the same Cerberus from before. Um, the only difference now is he spits out dogs, which you can kick back and explode, but on top of that, he has more health. Now, here comes the true, true hard part. Now the satyr has spawned. Alright, there's a couple things you can do. You can either charge up a Helios head to stun him for even just a few seconds, you can kick dogs into him, or maybe even like try to knock him in the air and do some air combos, but I wouldn't recommend that last one, because that last one doesn't sound very safe at all. But, what I recommend doing, for, or at least what I did, was I stayed away, you know, I kind of just watched the satyr, I kind of keep my eyes on him, and you want to keep your eyes on him the entire time because he likes to get around and he likes to do what I like to call invisible attacks. Basically attacks that you can't see because the Cerberus is too big or he's in the fucking way or just whatever. And run around the arena and use bow, you know, get some pop shots on uh, the Cerberus and just go from there. Now, save up your magic for this last phase of the fight. Save up your magic, all of it. And use the Blades of Chaos magic to get Army of Sparta to at least do a ton of damage to... Uh, well, I say a ton, but a good amount of damage to both the Satyrs and the Cerberus. The Cerberus doesn't matter right now. It, don't even worry about it too much. You want to try to get them together, of course, because you want to get damage on everybody. But if that can't work out, at least try to get the Satyrs together because those are important However, once magic's all gone, or, and especially in phase two, um, try to you know either stick to the Cerberus and keep the Seder like between keep the Cerberus between you and the Satyrs. And if that's not going to work for you, and that's not good enough, you can do what I'm doing, where I'm just kind of like staying back and then using the bow to kind of pick them off. Only like, problem with using the bow though is the lock-on targeting. So keep that in mind. You'll have to you know change your well who you're aiming for. Now, the invisible attacks I mentioned earlier are basically just like, you know, they're attacking you while the Cerberus is in front of you, you can't see yourself. So, typically in this fight, you can block almost every single attack except for the exploding dogs and except for that one specific slam that the Cerberus can do. 
And if you're paying close attention to what the Cerberus is doing, then typically you'll be able to avoid most of those shots. This entire thing is just a giant skill. It's just a giant fucking skill test. Also, that Seder execution kill does actually throw at the other Seder, and it does knock them back, which is why I was able to knock that last one off the cliff, and that would explain it. So, yeah, very hard fight. Uh, any other piece of advice I can give is... Either stay to the side or behind the Cerberus as much as you can. Um, although, that works, but you could also stay in front. That way you can keep an eye on the dogs. Because you'll see the dog spinning out and you'll know that's what the attack he's going for is. Because, um, sometimes, when you do, like, a finisher or even the L1 square, you'll sometimes, like, knock back the Cerberus and then he'll freak out and he'll do, like, a different attack. So keep that in mind too, that finishers and the L1 square do tend to kind of stop him from potentially spawning dogs. But yeah, don't use dogs too much, don't rely on them too much, just shoot the bastard. That's my best piece of advice, just shoot the bastards. So here comes the part where the second, or the second time this game checkpointed me in a horrible way, and it's right here. So the dogs already have damage on them for some strange reason, it's because I guess somehow the game fucking checkpointed me. Like, mid-fight. I have no clue. But once these assholes spawn, just do what you... Do what you feel like to the dogs. Uh, whether you want to kick them or not, I don't... It doesn't really matter, because... The, the main thing you want to kind of worry about the most... Isn't even really the dogs. It's, it's the damn sirens. Once you jump over here, you're going to end up getting a checkpoint. So keep that in mind as well. Um, that happened to me a couple of times. I was confused by it. But yeah, if you jump over there... Uh, you will get checkpointed. I did die, so that's why there's that edit. Technically, focus on the dogs first is retroactively a good idea in hindsight, actually. Because um, the sirens can't chase you that far, so I, I guess if anything, yeah, go for the dogs first. Fuck it. Just run around the room, run to, like, the right side of the room to try to get away from the sirens as fast as possible, and then just use that and the dogs and then if you need that checkpoint that other weird checkpoint then jump over to the other side and then you'll get it after that just do what you normally do to sirens and i still recommend using cestus though <coughs> i mean you know, do whatever you want of course i said it every video but um i still recommend using cestus because i feel like that's just a pretty good tool to have at your disposal and taking these bitches out fast faster than not basically and then, of course, if one blows up, then at least knocks the other one down. And a charged bow shot should theoretically knock them down. Uh, I don't have exact proof of that, but at least I don't think I do. <coughs> God damn. Sorry, my throat's getting all dry. I just did commentary. Oop, sorry. Like, I just did commentary of, like, part 14 or whatever, and, like, my throat is just in pain. Right now, I took like a five minute break and I came back and now I'm, I'm just fucking hurting all over. Also, if you hear my chair, I apologize for that too. This is a leather chair. It, it's it's the one I use and it's fucking annoying. But anyway, after all said and done, uh, if you do jump over to this side, do keep in mind the shield guys will spawn in and they will chase you down. So keep that in mind and don't let them get the ambush on you. That's something you don't want to have. Yep, happen. So here's where the bullying part of things come in. Just focus on one guy at a time. Don't worry about the other guys. Just pick one off. And then if they get too bad, uh, they get too scary, you know, run to the other side of the map, jump across this pit, you know, that kind of thing, and, and get your bearings back. <coughs> Shit, sorry. Because you're, you're, you're definitely going to need your bearings back because you're going to have to fight shield guys and satyrs. At least one satyr per fight, which is fine. They don't spawn two at once. No. No. No, I think they do. Oh, shit. I don't remember exactly. Um, however, you could just avoid them all outright if you wanted to. You don't have to fight these guys. You don't have to fight any of them. But if you want the orbs, you're going to have to. At this point, I probably could have just not fought them and just because I'm not going to raid much. Um, but I still did it anyway, just for the hell of it. So this is really hard to explain, but satyrs, they... They both suck and they don't at the same time. Uh, they're not manipulative. Manipula blah, blah, blah. It's not easy to manipulate them, but they do have these things where 
if they don't have like a wall to climb on, they can't go for a grab. So at the very least, all they can do is just go for normal attacks, which you can block. And they tend to kind of like to jump around you a lot, so... I use that to my advantage to kind of just pick off and bully, again, one shield guy at a time. And don't focus on the satyr first. Just don't worry about him. Who cares? If he gets annoying, then use the, the Helios head charge attack to stun him for like a few seconds. And after all of that said and done, you know, go for this nice, fun little circle hits. Now, granted, they made it to where this game where you can't, like, spam it one after another. You have to kind of wait for these guys to get done with their attacks because you got to wait now. It's an RPG, I guess. So, yeah, oh well. But just pay close attention. Uh, don't let them get the drop on you. They don't have anywhere they can grab you from, I'm pretty sure. I mean, they technically have walls they can probably jump on, but they just never do for me. So I would assume that, you know, my luck might actually, you know, go for you guys too. It might actually go for you. And you might be able to get lucky and not get grabbed. Because uh, that's the only thing that can't be blocked by them. Most of their attacks are blockable. They're actually a lot easier... They're, like, way easier to deal with in God of War 3 than they are, like, any other God of War, technically. It's just their positioning and, like, where the devs put them at in terms of, like, horde fights and shit. That's that's where they really, really, truly shine in terms of being assholes. So, yeah. Just try to, you know, go for the grab, attack, and then let them kind of just attack you know, attack back, block their attacks, parry their attacks, knock them on the ground, whatever it takes. You just want to make it to where you're fighting one at a time, which... Realistically, you are going to be. Um, you're not going to have two saviors to fight at once. Not again, not after that fucking Cerberus fight. So, I think that's probably, potentially, even the end of satyrs in general, I think. I don't remember. It's been a while since I've beaten God of War 3, but yeah, hopefully... Even if my commentary doesn't help, hopefully my visual guide helps, because... Yeah, I know. I, I'm i not perfect at guide stuff, technically. I, I've been doing this for years, I know, but... When it comes to God of War, it's a lot harder to explain without just being like, Well, just fucking hit him, I guess. Because I've been doing that for so long, you know? I've been playing God of War for so long that... I don't have the best way of explaining things, except for very specific tactics that I've used, right? But when it comes to just, like, normal fights like that, I, I don't know, just grab the guy... <laughs> Knock him on the ground, you know, grab him again, you know, that kind of thing. I, I always feel like I have to over-explain stuff. I I think I know where I get that from now. I get it from this fucking channel. That explains everything. Because I always feel like I'm not explaining things enough. It's not that I feel like my audience is dumb. That's not the case. It's just that, in my own opinion, I feel like... It, it's less of, like, audience members being dumb and more so, like... I'm worried that somebody uh, might confuse my words and I might say it uh, wrong or I might say it like an idiot and that's more on me, not you guys. So, yeah. Uh, anyway, that's the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you next time. So take care, everybody. Also, you guys are not dumb, but please don't take that out of context. Please. Please don't. I'm calling myself an idiot. But, yeah. See you later.